Hi, welcome to Cairns Gait and Posture Training. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about gait. So this is how you walk and run. Uh, at the same time, I'm going to be talking about myofascial lines, but I'm going to really simplify it uh, so that it's easy to understand. So first, I better talk about myofascial lines. So myofascial lines, they're basically just functional lines of muscle and fascia and connective tissue all connected together. So a really great example of this would be, um, would be the front line. So this, these, are, these are muscles that are all connected on the front side of your body. So you imagine if you were to go, go and slam a ball down here, if I take you from the side view, you lengthen, you'd be lengthening the front line of muscle and fascia, and then you shorten it when you slam it down. Now it's not as simple as that. I'm gonna be really, I'm gonna really simplify things here. Basically you've got um, several different myofascial lines. Uh, so you've got deep and superficial, front line, functional lines, spiral lines, lateral lines. Uh, the deep ones obviously are the deep muscle and tissue layers, and then you've got the superficial ones which are, are more on the outside. But it starts to get complicated, and you might think, it might get overcomplicated, you might think, why are these lines relevant to me? Uh, so I'm going to simplify it a little bit. I'm going to try and explain it uh, with the gait cycle as a, to tell you why the, the gait is so important. So let's take a, let's take a firstly a, um, a side view of the, of the gait cycle. So I'll take you halfway through a running stride. So if we're here like this, you can see as you, come, as you bring your leg up and bring it down, it's a bit hard for me to hold this pose, but generally we'll be in this position here. So when the, when the arm is up in this position, we're getting some some front line loading here and particularly on on particularly on this side so we've got some front line loading and then when you when you go forward with your gait the front line is now when your leg is back here is in a kind of a stretched position is in a lengthened position I prefer the word lengthen to stretched because stretch has a has a few a lot of baggage with it that term so so in a lengthened position and so when you're here in this with this arm up this leg forward, you're in a lengthened position. As you, as this leg comes down, that front line shortens, and then you're propelled forward. So that would be an example of the front line being used to, to lengthen and then shorten to propel yourself forward. So again, I'm simplifying the lines a little bit. I'm gonna simplify them to front. The next one's gonna be back. So again, when we get this leg up in the air here, we've got some length on the back the back line now. So the back line here is lengthened and then as the line comes down shortened and then you kind of push back on this leg that shortens and that propels you forward into your gait. The next one is going to be the spiral lines. So again we'll do we'll do again with this leg up. Just imagine that the legs more more up here but we're turned into this position and we've got length going across across the front here. So we've got length coming across the front here, and then as, my, as I turn the other way, it then shortens. So we've got length, shorten, and that propels me forward into my gait. The same thing is happening on the opposite side, obviously. So on the opposite side, I've got length from the left shoulder to the right buttock and down the leg. So and then as I turn, that propels me forward with the length on the back side as well. So we've got spiral lines on the front and back. That's typically called the anterior, uh, so the anterior being the front, posterior oblique slings. So it's the obliques help this motion of spiraling. Uh, so that would be, so we've gone, so far we've gone front line, spiral line. Now we're gonna go, so front line, back line, and spiral line. Now we're gonna go to the lateral lines. So the lateral lines obviously are uh, these ones that go down, go down the side. Um, obviously, again, I'm simplifying the terms for you, but just as to, to really um, help you understand how it, how it functions in gait. So from side on, from front on then, this will be easier to see. So we're, we're gonna get into this position, so sort of halfway through our gait. And then if you'll, you'll notice with this with sprinters, there's this slight rocking of the shoulders. So as you get, to this position, like that, you see that my left shoulder's dipped. As I come down to the other position, I dip on the other side. And this lateral 
flexion of the spine helps me transfer the weight. So I come from here, I'm going to, I'm going to turn, I'm going to spiral, use the spiral lines at the same time, and then the lateral line to shift my weight over onto the, onto the other foot. So I go from the, the right foot to the left foot, vice versa, and this combination of spiral and lateral movement helps me shift my weight onto that foot. And again, all these lines are not working in isolation, obviously, they're all working together. So working together, the lateral lines, the spiral lines, front line, that will also help you go forward into your gait cycle. Now, what tends to happen as you age is that you, you lose this postural integrity. So once you've lost the postural integrity a little bit, it becomes harder to create length in these lines. And when it becomes harder to create length, you lose the ability to propel yourself forward so easily because you want the length contract and that pulls you forward into your gait. As you lose your posture, you lose that ability. And so this is why you tend to see, as people get older, they are obviously slower. They're slower with their running and, and they're less efficient in their less efficient in their running and less efficient in their gait generally. So even in walking, they'll be a less efficient. Uh, and so you tend to see people kind of jog on the spot, you get less range of motion and you get less forward propulsion. And so that really is gait in a nutshell. And so why is it important? Why is it important to get this length for you? So you might think, I don't want to run anymore. It's not really important to me. But this running action, if you've got, if you're holding a good postural integrity here, helps lengthen and contract your muscles optimally. And that's very, very healthy for your, for your fascia, for your muscles and connective tissue. It's what really a stretch should be. A stretch should be you going through a natural range of motion like running. Uh, and that will help hydrate your tissues and you'll feel a lot better and it'll, you'll get great efficiency, uh, which will promote better joint health um, and generally better health overall. So that was just a summary uh, about gait and myofascial lines. Um, myofascial lines are, uh, are complicated, but that's it simplified. Uh, so here's me signing off from Cairns Gate and Posture Training. I'll see you next time.